Hi friends, it's a cold, rainy, dark day here. And so uh, what I wanna talk about today though is setting up an event with multiple DMX nodes. Basically the premise of this is here on Lauren Stage Lighting, we work with people that are like at all different walks of their lighting journey, right? All different things. But using Artnet or SACN nodes in a show is something that's going to be happening to you. And it's going to continue happening as you go more and more towards the future. What we want to talk about here just real quick today in a simple video is some of the steps to just setting up a network like that. Actually, let me just pull up a document here to draw and just kind of walk through, you know, some of those basics, how it works, what you might want or need to know in setting up just a basic computer or console and some DMX nodes. Now, depending on, and I apologize if my voice is like totally shot, I'm, I'm coming off some sickness here, but, but depending on your setup, a lot of times you're gonna have some kind of console. You're gonna have some kind of PC or console, but when it comes to it, you know, a lot of times you're just gonna have a simple console and then you're gonna have just a single DMX node, right? Just a box, right? That, that's got maybe one DMX port on it, maybe multiple. Then we can go ahead and just say DMX node. And, Connecting these two up is, is going to be pretty simple, right? Like a lot of the time, you know, setting up your first Artnet or SAC and node, and um, we actually have an old video on that from, well, the old office, um, the old, old office, two offices ago, where the basic thing with a console or a PC is that you need to have your IP addresses in range. What that means in lame man's terms, in terms of setup, means that if you're in here and you've got a computer that's got the IP address from its network that's plugged into of 192.168.0.2, then if you want to talk to a node that's on that network, most of the time your subnet mask by default will be 255.255.255.0. And that means if you want to talk to another device on that network, like a DMX node, in order to log into it, you're going to need to put that device in the same range. What that looks like is you could set it to like 192.168.0.3. You could set it to anything. But more often than not, with shows, with show networks, we're actually not going to use the 192 range. And the subnet mask, of course, would be the same on that. With show networks, like a lot of times you're going to connect to your Wi-Fi or connect to your facility network, and it may be in the 192.168 range. Most often with computers, it's a bad idea to set two network adapters to the same range of IP addresses. Bad things tend to happen. So a lot of the times for nodes, we'll go to the two dot range. Why? Because it's one of the ranges that's open by the protocols that govern our networks. And so that's also why things like Artnet, the protocol that we often send, um, or SACN, they, they kind of recommend going with the two dot range. So for example, if our computer's 2.0.0.2, which in long form would be like that, right? Just so that everybody has three digits, um, just to be clear. Though most operating systems will shorten it as such, right? Um, and that's perfectly fine. And then your node would just need to be, you know, 2.0.0.3. And as long as no other device on the network has that IP address, you're good to go. The same concept's gonna go when you start to add more and more nodes, okay? So when you have an event that has multiple nodes, there's, there's a few things you need to do. One is, you know, if you got a node out of the box, like a lot of times nodes by default are set to 2.0.0.1. Like I think the Chauvet DMX AN2s are, we use those a lot here, and many other nodes are, especially ones without screens like the Lightshark LS nodes as well. And so they're gonna default to that. The problem is you've gotta change one of these if you're gonna put two nodes on the network if they both have the same default, because you can't have two computers on the same network with the same IP address. That's like really key information for basics of computer networking. Okay, the next thing you need is you need a way to connect them all together. So if your nodes have Ethernet throughs, which is really, I mean, it's not a throughput, it's a repeat. It's actually a small network switch, 
in the device, then you can chain multiple devices together. Most people say up to about 10. After that, you start to run into latency issues. Or you can take a network switch and put it in line, or you could even put a router in the middle. That means we're just taking this now and we're taking these items, right? And we are extending them off. Okay, and they turn gray. That was cool. And in the middle, right, we've got arrow, arrow. You know, now we'll have a new node over there. But in the middle, we're going to put ourselves a network switch. And in a consumer, you know, router. Oops, we made that text color. Totally transparent. Perfect. Um, and it could be a router, like in the consumer grade stuff, a router is a device that has a router, a switch, and an access point in it. Routers, by definition, basically, if we simplify it down, it's a device that connects smaller networks, or not smaller to larger networks, but networks to other networks, basically. But we'll just say it's a network switch, and then we go out and we've got more nodes, right? More nodes, or noses, whatever you wanna say. Um, and, and then you're good to go. And then inside the node, configuration-wise, you know, oops, all you're gonna have to do, basically, is have that different IP address and set the ports to be different, and then you're off to the races. So how does that look in real life, right? How does that, how does that work? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. The first and kind of most archaic way is if you've got simple nodes that don't have screens that are just, you know, basic DMX nodes, they'll have an IP address that you'll have to, maybe it's 2.0.0.1, you'll have to set your computer within range of that, like 2.0.0.2, and then you can log in, there's a web page, you can change the, the IP address, you can change what universe is gonna be on what port of that node, and you can save it. When you start to get into more and more nodes though, that's when you really, you kind of skip over those cheaper nodes a lot of the times and you say, okay, now I want the stuff that's a lot easier to configure because it's gonna save me from pulling my hair out, just make my life a lot easier. So in this case, I'm gonna launch the Netron Central Util Utility uh, from Obsidian Control Systems because I've got two nodes plugged in over there, okay? And the beautiful thing about a software like this, and we like the Netron notes not only because they're priced well, but because they have advanced features like this, is that, boom, I turn this on, I'm gonna see every node in my network. If I wanna change the IP address, I don't even have to be within range of it. It'll tell me I'm out of range, and then I can actually go and change it in here without being actually within range of it. It does some voodoo magic, um, as I call it. <laughs> just means somebody who knows a lot more about networking than me figured something out, right? That's that. But essentially, you can log into a piece of software like this and be able to go in here and just say, hey, okay, I need on this EP2 to go ahead and make my second port here, universe five, right? And then I wanna save that, perfect. And then I wanna go into this RDM10, and I want to set my DMX ports to different universes as well, which in this port is A or B. And then there's some other settings as to what A and B get mapped to. It's a little bit uh, more, more, not complicated, but it has direct DMX inputs on it, which are A and B, and it, it allows you to flip between them, basically. With that, you know, that's pretty much it. Once you've done that, you just send the universes from your console on the network adapter that has these IP that's in this IP address range, and those nodes will respond to the data that they need to listen to and be good to go. Uh, what are some things you might run into here? Well, if we're, let's just load up Onyx here, um, just as an example here. So cheaper, smaller nodes um, can start to have issues if you start to send a lot of data to them. If you start to send a lot of DMX universes, um, that can become an issue uh, with some less powerful nodes. Not every node, and again, you have to send a lot of universes for it to become an issue. If you start to run into this, you either want to unicast or multicast to those devices, um, which in the case of Onyx, for example, now we'll just go in here to our Ether DMX settings. And they have a devices tab. And anything that shows up in the devices tab, essentially, is being sent ArtNet instead of us just broadcasting it out to everything on the network. It's casting only to those. Whether it's unicast or multicast, I'm not sure. Um, it's 
maybe unicast, um, but I'm not on a network that has um, multicast capabilities, so multicast would be broadcast. Anywho, um, the point is here, it, it really is as simple as just sending the universes. If you are sending out Artnet, I do recommend, um, one, not broadcasting unless you have to, and then also only sending the range of universes that you actually need to send. Um, at the end of the day, when you're setting up your first show, especially with multiple universes, you know, maybe of 10 or maybe of four or whatever, you know, you want to have as little net data on the network as possible. It's just generally a really good best practice in order to have the most reliable event that you possibly can. But then other than that, it's really kind of that simple. You just it's really about when you're working with multiple Artnet or SACN devices, you're working with multiple nodes and you're configuring them into a show. It really is about being organized and you know making sure you're sending the right things to the right places um, so that when you do have any issues you and you do have to troubleshoot on site, you're able to go, okay, I know that this node, that this port is sending out this universe and, and you don't have anything crossed there um, because when you do send wrong universes to the wrong sets of lights, yes, they don't work right. Imagine that. They may they may do all sorts of fun things. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this a little bit of a primer on just using multiple Artnet or SACN nodes in one show. Uh, it's one of those things that I think people get worried about a lot. Uh, when they're first starting with lighting, if they haven't used nodes before, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. And um, if you do need more help with this or anything else, we help people every day inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs. And if you need to buy stuff, you definitely want to check out Learn Stage Lighting gear here in the U.S. We love to help people get the gear they need so that they can make awesome, incredible lighting. If that sounds good to you, we'll see you there in our next video. Thanks.